Amen. During this past month, our lectionary readings have taken us on quite the journey together. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that it has almost been a month since we celebrated the wonder and the awe of the birth of the Christ child. And since then, you may recall that we have also been inspired by the faithfulness of Anna and Simeon, who patiently waited their whole lives for the coming of the Messiah. And then the following Sunday, the Magi modeled for us what it means to honor Christ by sharing the most precious gifts that we have. And last week on MLK Sunday, Reverend Tim lifted up the mentor of Dr. King, who was the late Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman, someone who still implores us today through his writing to follow Jesus with our whole being, that we might truly live together as one people. And so this Sunday, I give thanks for this biblical grounding that we have already been given as a congregation at the beginning of this new calendar year. And as we look ahead to the rest of this year, this year that promises to be a year of significant meaning and consequence across our nation as we prepare for the presidential election this fall, and also here within our congregation as we prepare for later in the year when Reverend Tim will retire after 24 years of faithful and impactful and spirited ministry here at First Church. And so it is at the beginning of this new calendar year and at this point in our lectionary cycle that scripture reminds us once again that God always gives us one to another as we seek to follow Jesus while we journey through the various seasons of our lives together. During these past couple of weeks, as I have been engaging with our text from the Gospel of Mark for this morning, and putting it into conversation with our broader context, this theme of presence, that's P-R-E-S, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, presence, emerged for me, both through our reading from Mark for today, as well as in the themes of Dr. King's preaching and teaching that we have all been reflecting on in recent weeks. Our text for today is short and direct, just seven verses, which, by the way, you may recall is characteristic of the literary style of the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel writer of Mark had this way of getting right to the point, which reflects the sense of urgency that he brought to all his writing as the earliest Gospel writer. It is believed that the Gospel of Mark was written somewhere between the years 65 and 73 <coughs> CE. And here, in our brief Gospel reading for this morning, which is from the very first chapter of Mark, the word immediately is already used two times. And as an aside, the biblical Greek word for the term immediately is euthios, and it is a term that is used 87 times in the New Testament, 
although 42 of those uses are here in the book of Mark alone. Indeed, Mark's message for the people of God was critical and compelling, just as we find in our Gospel reading for today. In our text this morning, Jesus said, follow me. And it is written that Simon, who Jesus later renamed as Peter, and his brother Andrew immediately left their nets in order to follow Jesus. And then a couple of verses later, we learn that Jesus immediately called James and his brother John, both of whom also dropped their nets and even left their father Zebedee in order to follow Jesus. And so it is here in this very first chapter of the very first gospel that was recorded that we find this sense of immediacy and urgency that comes with following Jesus faithfully. Jesus did not mince words when he called his earliest disciples. Jesus' plea was urgent when he said, follow me, follow me, follow me. It was in recent weeks that I recognized again Jesus' plea to follow him through the impassioned words of Dr. King's well-known I Have a Dream speech. One of the most famous speeches in history, which Dr. King, as you will recall, delivered to over 250,000 people at the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. In this pivotal moment of the Civil Rights Movement, Dr. King eloquently identified and described that moment as the fierce urgency as now. That very moment in our civil rights history is best understood as the fierce urgency of now. And later on in the speech, as you may recall, Dr. King emphasized that it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of this moment. Indeed, there has always been an urgency for equal rights and justice throughout our nation. And yet, and yet justice has been deferred and denied. You may recall that Dr. King's words that he wrote from the Birmingham jail when he said, justice too long delayed is justice denied. Dr. King's words about delayed justice came to me again in recent weeks when I learned about part of our civil rights history right here in Ohio. And sadly, it's a story that is not yet well known, although that will soon change. The nonprofit organization called Ohio Humanities, a group that some of you may be familiar with, recently released a documentary called The Lincoln School Story, The Battle for School Integration in Ohio. It's a 20-minute film that tells the truth about the history of segregated schools here in our state. And it tells the story of schools in the small town of Hillsboro, which is not that far from Columbus. 
You may know it's about an hour south of here and is about halfway between Chillicothe and Cincinnati. Through this film, which is referred to as the Lincoln School Marchers, we learn the poignant and painful and powerful story about the 55 black mothers and their children who courageously took a stand on a daily basis from 1954 until 1956, which, by the way, their protest began long before the Montgomery bus boycott, which, as you will recall, started in December 1955. After Brown versus the Board of Education was decided in 1954, the mothers and their children from the Lincoln School marched to and from a white-only school every day to demand inclusion for their children, even though their children were turned away every day and continued to be denied admission for nearly two years. And again, this was after Brown versus the Board of Education became law. Almost 10 years before Dr. King gave us that language about the fierce urgency of now, the Lincoln School mothers and children already knew what that meant because they lived it day in and day out for 21 months, even though justice continued to be denied to their families on a daily basis. The Lincoln School Marchers is one of the most powerful and inspiring films that I have seen in a long, long time. And I encourage all of you to watch it as well. You'll find it on the Ohio Humanities website, although it is expected to be shown on PBS later this year. In our Gospel reading from Mark today, Jesus compels us, compels all of us, just like Peter and Andrew and James and John, to drop our nets of distraction and hesitation and complacency and to look within our own hearts and to reevaluate our priorities and to commit and recommit to following in the way of Jesus. That is, to love God with all our heart and soul and mind and to truly love and see and advocate for our neighbor as ourselves. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>